So I'm just making a quick video to summarize the new game mode released today and give you tips to clear efficiently. All this information is taken from a Reddit post titled Intangible Barrier, created by Far Illustrator 2644. So full thanks goes out to him and to all those who responded in said post sharing tactics from their own experiences. I'll link the post in the description or the pinned comment so you can look for it there. I've verified most of this stuff myself as I've recorded and I've cleared the entire tower already. So what is Intangible Barrier? Intangible Barrier is a new game mode released in Revived Witch today. It's basically a tower mode, labyrinth mode or clear the floor mode, whichever one you prefer to call it that you've seen in other gacha games. As you clear the floors you get rewards and the higher you go the better the rewards. There are 108 floors in all and it will cost a hefty amount of stamina to clear all but thankfully you have a week to clear it so pace yourself. Every once in a while you are given a choice on how to proceed and it is usually pick one of two options. When faced with this choice, here is the order of your priority. Elite mobs should always be chosen over any other option when they are presented to you. This is because they give the most rewards and they also give you a blessing which enhances your team for the rest of the tower. Our Nate chests are the next in line. If there are no elite mobs, this is your next best choice. These chests just give rewards. Regular monsters are the next best thing if neither elite mobs or ornate chests are given as options. Following that, you would choose the wooden chest, which rewards a little less than fighting a regular monster. The last two and lowest priority options are the fountain, which heals you, or the scroll, which so far can heal you, hurt you, or do nothing. And someone also said that it can give rewards, but I haven't seen this myself. Everyone has access to Cynthia, so everyone should have at least a decent healer, so I can't see why people would need to use the fountain, as it gives no rewards. And as for the scroll, RNG is RNG, so that is why these are the two lowest priority. As for my personal thoughts on the game mode, the rewards are all useful. You get mana and all sorts of power materials, with more emphasis placed on the unique equipment shop. And towards the latter stages, you also have a chance to get rainbow gear. I got two pieces in my clear, so it is well worth the investment. My only complaints are that the walk speed is a little slow, and they only give you one week to clear it even though it is open only once a month. I know the weak limit is to condense your stamina use and force you to buy stamina, and it is also probably why it released during the Valentine's event. I think that's about it for this video. You can visit the subreddit post for more details or just try the mode out for yourself. I just made this video to point you in the most efficient and lucrative direction. There is one thing I haven't confirmed yet, so if you know you can answer in the comment section. When you die, they refund you some of the stamina based on how far you got on that particular level and send you back to the start of the level where you can then proceed to gather rewards again. I take this to mean that you keep the previous rewards you got before you die, but get back less stamina. If you know for sure, let me know in the comments. Other than that, this is the end of the video. Good luck on clearing the tower and remember that this is just tips. Make your own choices when going through the gameplay mode. Picking a chest instead of fighting when you are close to a boss may help you more than a few extra rewards.